Wet 13 is coming this Wednesday, and with the head from Wet 12 being probably one of the coolest monsters ever, we've got to delve into now what we can expect inside of Wave 13 this week. <laughs> Amber Island is now actually approaching its end point. As if we have been looking at the monsters here, what we have left for Amber Island, we actually only have two monsters left now. We're at the end game, guys, now. We've got two Quint monsters left. But there's two Quints that we have left. Each represent an element, lucky for us, as we know. And we actually do know that the two Quints that we have left are the plant and cold element Quints. And going back to us constellations from Starhenge, actually, we might be able to work out which one is going to be coming inside of wave 13 this week. So over in as constellations, we have Harnicle, who represents January with the water element, Furnos in February for fire, and then Glacier in March with cold. And we're actually in March right now. And going by how inside of January, we saw the water quint with that being bowhead, inside of March, we're going to be seeing the cold element quint. So as cold quint monster is going to be as wave 13 one. And if you guys need any more further proof by this theory too, if we go on over to his promo that we have for Grumpire this week. Grumpire is actually from Cold Island and they love throwing in his promos teasing what's going to be coming in the upcoming updates. So it's certainly going to be the case that we're going to be seeing as Cold Element Quint this week. And while we're here to make sure to snap that like button while we're here. For this Cold Element Quint, all of us Quint so far, looking at every single one has been so colourful and eccentric and had such vibrant designs. And therefore, for the this cold element quint. I'm looking at all the ones that we've got so far, but for this next one, I'm looking at it and I kind of want it to go in the opposite direction. I still want it to be really cool, obviously, guys, but I think going in a different direction in terms of the colour scheme and making this one a little bit morbid would be a really interesting venture. For the cold element, I get the sense as though it's a lot more ominous in comparison to the rest of the elements. Cold Island song is a lot more morbid, and I think to represent that in its full stead, I think going ahead and having a more dark a colour scheme with this monster would be a great change of pace for the Quint Elementals. I mean, we have Quarister. Quarister is probably the most loved Quad Elemental, for example, and I feel like carrying that through with the more ominous tones and it feeling more distant and less eccentric, yet it's still carrying that immense epic factor towards it could be just what this new monster needs. For its design, we're going to be seeing blues, I have no doubt, and some embracing of the ice and snow, but particularly what it's going to be based off this time around. I think it's going to be based of course, off a cold style creature. With Bowhead, they slam dunked it on us that it was based on a hammerhead shark, which took pretty much everyone by surprise, I think, at that point, as we'd seen a little unicorn horn at that point as a teaser, and I don't think anyone could have pointed out that that massive thing was going to come from that. But, seeing as though that was just such a huge surprise, and it carried the design and just made that monster itself, I feel like they're going to do that again. We're going to see, I feel like, another creature that is going to be based off. And when I'm looking at these different snow-like creatures, the one that I immediately think of is in fact a yeti. The yeti to me evokes a sense of epicness yet could still carry that ominous tone that we might be looking for. However, with the yeti, I do think it's quite similar towards Mammoth's design. Seeing as though Mammoth is based on Mammoth's though, it could certainly still happen and I would love to see this happen. Out of all of them, I feel like this would be the most likely and honestly the most epic one. So if we're to get anyone, I feel like this one is the one to happen, guys. A second one that I was thinking it could be based off is an owl. This is a bit more of a laid-back creature, so I was a bit hesitant to put this on my list. But my third one, guys, is the one that I honestly think could be a second most likely option here, and that is just a fox. A fox isn't really the one that I think about when I'm thinking about having this huge epic quint monster to be inside of the game, but if we're going back towards its sound that this cold elemental is likely to make, I think, seeing as though it is based on the cold element, it's going to harm come back towards the cold elementals overall. All of the cold elementals mostly seem to go back to being percussionist monsters, and therefore, I feel like a fox could carry this a lot more. I don't sense inside of the song that we're really going to be seeing a very intense instrument right now, and I feel like, therefore, a fox could be just the one to carry it. As if I'm looking at a yeti, I don't picture that having a lighter instrument, and I imagine it having a more intense one. So the fox could 
would be as most ideal one to have that lighter instrument. And going off of how I don't think we're going to be seeing a very intense instrument this time around, let's actually go into where I think this is going to end up dropping. Now, the beat drop is the place that we're going to be talking about today. It feels like this is the place where we need the most right now. And seeing as though the cold elementals are all percussionists quite frequently, I feel like the cold quint could be the one that fulfills that role and finally fills out the beat pop. To me, it just feels like that verse is desperately calling out as though it needs something the most out of anywhere inside of the song and a percussion monster would fulfill that role the best. It could be a gong or cymbals to complement dromedary. I definitely feel like it's going to have to complement dromedary now, which is a really weird thing because it only plays two notes. <laughs> I still can't get over that. But regardless, I feel like it's going to fulfill that role and complement it. And I also feel like it's going to help once more uplift that transition into the main verse after the beat drop. I don't sense as though we're completely done there and I feel like there's one missing component there. And we love how Amber Island likes to just place one thing in one place and leave it at that. So if it's going to do that, then I feel like that's the best place for it to do it right now. Whilst we're on about as percussion monsters too, I've brought it being a gong or potentially cymbals and particularly there's lots of other instruments inside of the percussionist family that I've not brought up right now, like drums and whatnot, but I feel like right now, seeing as though the beat drop is quite important towards the feeling of Amber Island, I don't sense as though a very powerful instrument is needed right now. It just needs to fill that verse out a little bit more so it's not as bare bones. And also, if it did have a powerful percussionist side of it, then I feel like it might be going back towards being a bit too similar to Dromedary. While I do feel like this one is going to be in the beat pop, as that feels like where a percussion monster would go, if it is to be that the cold element, I do want to bring up where I think also the song does need expansion because we do have two quints left, so it could be either of the two. The other place where I'm sensing something else is needed right now is the second time that Yelmut plays. In the second half of the song, when Yelmut plays, that is the exact same as the opening. <laughs> So, in order to encapsulate the build-up of the song overall, I feel like something is needed in the second half of the song when Yelmo is playing. So, if it isn't going to go in the beat pop, then I feel like it's going there. But given how this is as percussion monster more than likely that we're going to be getting, I feel like the beat pop is where this is going to go. Now, going back to as rare family that we've been seeing in Rout Out on Amber Island, if we go on over to as wave odd, we've been seeing all of the rares release in their wave. Order. So first we had Yelmot, then Flamox, last time Krillby, and then next time we're going to be seeing this week Wave 4's Rare. And inside of Wave 4, we've got Edamimi. So we're going to be seeing Rare Edamimi. Me guys, and for Rare Red and Mimi, I think everyone is all about the flowers. The flowers, everyone looks at those on the hands, and I feel like that's what everyone thinks of when they think of Red and Mimi. But you know what? Red and Mimi is not just about flowers, it's about beans. <laughs> Beans and those beans need to be represented in Edamimi as Edamimi is based on Edamimi beans and they have them pods across their arms and also on the hair topper. So they've got to be based on flowers and beans. You're hearing me beans. <laughs> Hearing my beans now. Nah. Hearing me talk about beans a lot today. <laughs> so we need the beans to be represented. I feel like it's too easy to focus only on the flower side of things and we don't want them to do that. So we got to have some bean recognition here. The representation of the beans is very important. So <laughs> it's got to be based on a different kind of bean, I feel like. It could be based on brown fair or white lima beans. All across the arms and on the head topper, we could be seeing these different kinds of beans. And if we're going to have different kinds of beans, I think it could be a different kind of bean inside of the monster world with law, and that could be explained inside of its bio. Now we have the tulips on its hands too right now, so any other flower species other than that I think would be an excellent addition to Edamimi too. I feel like though that should be the main purpose behind this, seeing as though Edamimi is in the name, it's based on beans. So we got to have some bean recognition. And if I had to call whichever flower it would be, I would love for it to be a rose. 
We've got a tulip, sure, but I love my roses. I don't know what it is, but it's my favourite flower. So tying it back to that, I think, would be a wonderful idea. And I would love for this to be a bit more pretty and colourful instead of the Amber Island rares that we've got right now. They're all black and white. We've got rare Krillbe, Flamox, sure. We've got rare Yelmut, purple side of things, but it feels like they're all black and white, which is wonderful, and I love them all very dearly, but I would love to see some more colourful designs designs come out of Edamimi this time around. And talking about colourfulness, right now on screen we've got Lyquad 666's artwork to show you guys. Go and check them out and I must say they have added an absolutely amazing idea onto this design. Instead of the flowers being enclosed, they've actually opened them up on their arms and I think this is ingenious. They've changed up the dress a little bit and instead of the huge bean that has sprouts up from Edamimi's head, instead they've opened that up and made it a beautiful full flower, which I'd be in awe, to be honest. And I love this design very dearly. However, I've got to say, I don't know whether white is the way to go this time. We've had lots of black and white, and I'm looking beyond that right now, and I'm thinking some other colours mixing into these Amber Island rares would be a good option right now. As long as we got the beans, though, then everything is good, because the beans will rule the world, and we'll have the bean representation. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to watch this, guys, if you enjoyed this video. <laughs> Hashtag bean squad in the comments, guys.